Hi there, I'm Matt Eland, and I want to talk to you about machine learning in C Sharp using ML.NET. ML.NET is Microsoft's machine learning framework. Uh, it runs uh, in C Sharp, F Sharp, VB.NET code, anything that really runs on .NET, .NET framework, uh, or .NET Core. Really, any .NET, <laughs> .NET code for the last 10 years uh, can run ML.NET. Um, so ML.NET lets you do most common machine learning tasks using your own machine uh, and your own services, um, and there's really no cost associated with it. So uh, I have a sample application here, and I will put the, uh, the link uh, to this repository in the description and a shortcut in our video here. Uh, but this is a sample application that, that's built to uh, classify video games. Uh, that have not yet been released, uh, you give it information about that game, uh, such as whether or not it contains violent, violence, gore, uh, nudity, etc., and it's going to classify a machine, or it's going to train a machine learning model that can then be used to predict the ESRB rating of a game uh, that does not yet exist. So you can use this prior to submitting a game on the market and get a predicted score plus a, com a predicted group plus a confidence rating. So uh, this is a console application. Uh, I'm gonna hit train a model, and I'll show you how this actually works in a little bit. I'm just showing you the, the, the sample here. So I'm gonna train for 10 seconds, uh, and it's gonna try a bunch of different machine learning models. Uh, I don't necessarily care about the algorithms that it's using. Um, AutoML is what we're using under the hood here, and it actually knows to try a, a number of different things. And the one that it ultimately found uh, was this uh, SG, yeah, SGD calibration OVA. Uh, and so this has a you know fairly decent uh, performance. It's about 80% performance uh, for this. It does misclassify some things. Uh, we could look at this uh, confusion uh, matrix in a little bit more detail if we wanted to, but there's uh, other videos out there on that. Uh, but this per this looks like it's it's going to be a fairly accurate prediction. So let's try to use this to predict a few sample video games, um, and see how it comes up with. So, teen side scroller, it thinks that that's probably going to be a teen uh, rating with about seventy seven percent confidence. Uh, kind of sus. That's a game I actually made. Uh, it thinks that's probably an E, but it's not very confident on that. So it might be an E T. Uh, everyone ten plus. Uh, Earthlings are coming. That's another one I'm built. Uh, it thinks that's an everyone. Uh, a game with about a 75% confidence score. That's probably accurate. Uh, Shoddy Surgeon Simulator it thinks that's probably mature. Uh, we'll take a look at why that is it, it, when we take a look at our program, um, but mostly due to the gore and blood and all that. Uh, then Assistant to the Lawn Service Manager 2022 uh, thinks that that's probably an inter everyone 10 plus. And then Intense Shooterama, uh, that's definitely going to be a high level uh, mature only title. So uh, if we wanted to, we could save this uh, machine learning model to the disk. Uh, and if we had came in later, we could load it from the disk. And that actually just creates a zip file on my disk with that model in it. But let's take a look at how this is actually working, because that's really what you're here for. So I'm going to look at my ESRB rating predictor, which is the class that I use to really manage my model. And again, the repository for this is available on GitHub. You can take a look at this. I also have a comprehensive article outlining the steps by step uh, for this, uh, if you'd prefer that. But here I've got a train model. So when you're building a machine learning model, you're spending a lot of time up front to train that model. And that's what this code here is doing. Uh, we are creating a pair of iData views using a machine learning context, this ML context class up here. We're taking this ML context, we're using it to load some data from a file. Uh, here we're, we're loading some data I grabbed from Kaggle, from a data set on Kaggle.com. It's a very wonderful open source uh, data science community that happens to have a lot of free data uh, sources out there. And this was one uh, on games. Um, so I have a file specifically for training my models and a, speci a file specifically for validating the performance of those trained models. Um, these models tend to perform about 80% no matter how long I train them. Uh, so I suspect that there, there either is a lot of variance uh, or bias in this uh, in the data set, or uh, that there may not be some good separation between these, the train and the validation sets. Uh, but I'm opening it up as a comma-separated value file, so I'm spe separate, specifying the separator character of comma. By default, it's going to be a tab. I'm specifying that there is a header row, so the first row is something we should ignore. Uh, I'm also saying allow quoting. Uh, this is because the data here will have some quotes uh, and commas in some of these um, in some of these these first columns here. 
so here we go. Uh, this uh, Sukuna Ride is the Ruin. Uh, this has some quotes around it. There are some things. I think there's some Warhammer 40,000 K. Um, uh, that it will not be able to parse unless you set this allow quoting to true. Uh, so this is a pretty good uh, setup for a comma separated value file. And we're using this for both of the training and the test data. In order to do this, we have to have a game rating class. That's just a plain old C-sharp class uh, with a few attributes here. So this uh, has a bunch of properties uh, that are really related to that comma separated value file I just showed you a second ago. Um, I have to tell it what column everything corresponds to, and I tend to do these things in order. Um, this is about the one part of ML.NET I don't love, is I have to really define the columns uh, by index, and I wish that there was a little less tedious way of doing that. Um, so that's that's about uh, the extent of training the uh, uh, the model, or, or, or sorry, of loading the data set. Um, so now that we have our data, we want to go in and we want to actually run an experiment. Now this is a classification experiment, and this is specifically a multi-class classification experiment because there are a total of four ESRB ratings that we predict. Uh, everyone, everyone 10 plus, teen, and adult. Now that's contrasting with a binary classification where something is either something or not something. Um, now, ML.NET supports both as well as many, many other things. Uh, but I'm just showing you uh, a multi-class classification experiment here just as a demonstration of ML.NET auto, uh, auto ML. So I'm saying, hey, I want to create an auto uh, machine learning experiment. Um, it's going to be a multi-class classification experiment. Here are the settings I want you to use. Um, the most important one here is the max experiment time in seconds. Uh, Microsoft has some wonderful guidelines on how long you should test, uh, train your train your data. Um, this, this size of a data set, it recommends about 10 seconds, which is why I showed you that earlier. You can customize the optimization metric, um, choose what where to, to cache the data, uh, either on disk or in memory. Uh, you can also uh, tell it that you want to exclude certain uh, training algorithms from consideration. So very similar to what you can do in Azure Machine Learning Studio, uh, but this is just the ML.NET version of that, uh, using C Sharp or F Sharp or whatever you want to write it in that supports .NET. Uh, the next step here is, this is the really critical one. This is where we're actually going in and we are training the model. So we have our experiment and we are now executing it. We're telling it, hey, here's your training data, here's your validation data set. You don't have to provide it as a validation data set, but it's much faster if you do. Um, because it's not trying to split and k-fold uh, on your data. Um, so if you have a good data set, uh, you can omit this validation data, or you can keep the validation data in, in place. Um, this one tends to perform a lot poorer uh, if you provide both the trained data set and the validation data. Um, so that, that's an interesting little anomaly here. Uh, you tell it what, what name of column it should look for for the value it's trying to predict. So here we're trying to predict the ESRB rating column. Uh, so that is this last column here. Uh, if you don't specify that, it's going to look for a column named label. So um, I could have specified here uh, a uh, column name attribute and told it the name of this column is the label. Uh, and then I wouldn't have had to um, specify the label column name here. But I find that this is, is fairly, um, it, it's, it's nice to name the la name, explicitly name what we're trying to predict when we are uh, executing our experiment here. Uh, you can also optionally provide it a progress handler. This is a class that's just going to report the progress to the user. So you can update a progress bar. You can uh, log something to the console. This is a very simple one. Uh, it just takes in uh, the current uh, run detail, uh, and it's going to just log out to the console uh, what model was just trained, how long it took to try to train that model, and the accuracy it, it achieved. Um, you have a lot of different metrics uh, available inside of validation metrics. I'll let you explore those because they're going to be different based on the type of experiment you're running. Um, but keep in mind that your validation metrics may be null if ML.NET auto ML says, hey, I want to just abort this training. We've reached our time. This is taking too long. I need to stop. Uh, this is a synchronous operation. I do not believe there is an async version of execute available. I may be wrong on that, but I didn't see one. Um, but once we have that, we have the experiment result, and we can get out the information about the best performing uh, version of that model. Uh, this is the actual I transform that we can use to uh, uh, to predict uh, values in the future. 
Uh, we can also store the schema, which is useful if we're going to be saving this uh, this model later. So the schema comes from the, the training and validation data. Uh, finally, uh, you do have the validation metrics you can get uh, on performance. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm just, just getting the name of the algorithm that ran uh, that was the best, the automatically best performing algorithm. Uh, and I'm also generating a confusion table. That's that little uh, table we saw of uh, that had that strong diagonal line to it that showed what things were being predicted as what values. I'll return that as, as to string. Uh, and that's actually how we generate our, our model. And that model here is an I transformer. Uh, and we can take that I transformer and we can use that to uh, to predict things. That takes a long time to train, but we can actually save it to disk. We'll take a look at that in a second. Um, but once we have it, it's very quick to predict the value of the of our label column, our uh, ESRB rating column in this case. So the way we classify things is we are going in and we're creating a prediction engine. We, so again, we're using our, our ML context. We're calling it model create prediction engine. We're giving it the type of input. That's our uh, the same type that we uh, loaded up here into our uh, training and, and validation sets. And we're telling it what type of prediction it should come up with. This is a, another uh, plain old C-sharp class. This one's a lot simpler. Um, you have a, e, uh, here we have an ESRB uh, rating and a score. Uh, you do need this column name predicted label. Uh, that seems to be uh, what ML.NET needs. Um, so I chose to keep, uh, I could have named this column here predicted label, but I felt that it was clearer for my own code. Uh, to use the ESRB rating here instead of the column name. Uh, but this uh, float here, this float array score, this is this is from a multi-class classification result. Um, so if you're doing something different, like a binary classification, you might not use a score here. But this is telling me, hey, what's the what are the what's the probability that this is any one of those given classes? Uh, so E, E, T, T, M in this case. And the largest possible one of those is going to be my the ones the most confident on. So I'm actually giving us this convenience property here, uh, this auto property to uh, get the confidence, which is the largest possible score in that score array. So uh, we create this prediction engine. We tell it what machine learning model we want. Again, that's the uh, I transformer uh, that we trained in our training set. Um, it can take in an input schema, uh, the schema for the, the data set that you're using, which is why I saved that to the schema uh, variable before, the schema field. Um, it seems to not need that, but if it likes that, I'm gonna give it to it because it could improve performance uh, because it might not need to, to parse things out. I'm not entirely sure what it's doing with that schema, but I had it, so I decided to, to, to provide it to this method. Um, and once you have your engine, you can then loop over a collection or just send it a single one, uh, call predict, and it's going to generate whatever class of prediction you gave it. In this case, we're giving it an ESRB prediction. Um, so this is going to have the predicted label as well as the probability scores for each given label. Um, I'm returning here a tuple. You, you don't need to do this. This just worked well for my application. I'll, I'll show you my sample code in a second. Um, I have a couple methods here for loading and saving a model. So if you have a, uh, if you want to load a model from disk, it's just a zip file, uh, and you can call model context model load. And you tell it what path you want, um, and you can also uh, specify the schema. So it's going to load the schema from that model as well. Uh, but this is going to store your I transformer, which is your actual machine learning model, as well as the schema. Save model very similar. Context model save. You give it the trained machine learning model and the schema. The schema here is optional. You can provide null if you want, um, but there is no overload that doesn't take in a schema. But it's fine to provide it null, uh, but you do need to tell it where to save it from. And that's going to actually take that model and basically zip it up on disk and save it in that file. So uh, that's 117 lines here to, to run a simple machine learning uh, algorithm. Uh, I, again, I don't need to know anything specifically about the individual machine learning algorithms that are being used under the hood. That's what AutoML gets me. It tries them all. It finds the best performing ones. It tunes the hyperparameters for me, and it spits out a good model for me. Um, the way this works is I have a program here that I'm just creating my predictor. Um, I am then asking the user what they would like to do. If, they tell, if they'd like to train, I'm going to call my training method, which is going to just say, hey, how many seconds do you want to train? 
Um, it's going to do some validation here. And then it tells you we're training. We go ahead and train, passing in the two the two files that we're using, the uh, training set and the validation set. Pass it in the number of seconds to train. And then once it completes, we actually generate out the, uh, the debugging information there. If we were to choose to save or load, we do call handle save model, handle load model, which would then call those two methods, the save and load on our tran transform. Prediction, uh, we are getting a list of games from a, a list of sample games. I'll show you those in a second. Those are just plain, plain old C-sharp classes. Uh, but then I'm go going into our pr to our um, our predictor, our ESRB rating predictor. I'm calling the classify games method. That's the one that we showed you earlier that had the uh, uh, predict method call. Uh, and for every game, it's going to uh, it's going to give me back a prediction and the information about the game. This is a C sharp tuple, uh, and then we're using that uh, to log the prediction as well as the the name of the game, um, just so we have some information about both sides of that. Uh, you can't really add a game uh, to uh, any more information to this this class uh, as far as properties, or you start to encounter errors. So that's why I'm using a tuple here. Um, but structure your application in whatever way makes sense. You don't need to do a tuple here. It just made the most sense for my application. I could have created another class if I needed to. Um, and I'm just uh, displaying the percentage of the confidence score here. So a very simple application. I encourage you to play around with it. Um, take a look at the documentation for ML.NET. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do with it. Uh, it's really just scratching the surface. Uh, there's also some no-code solutions that actually generate some code for you um, as a starter code, but even generate an ASP.NET application for you, <laughs> which is which is neat if you want to just want to deploy an API. Um, if you are really adverse to code, uh, instead of ML.NET, I would advise you to check out Azure Machine Learning Studio's automated ML features, uh, which actually have a lot more bells and whistles than the ML.NET stuff here, um, and they're built for somebody who doesn't necessarily understand code. Um, but this is great for incorporating into existing or new uh, .NET applications, regardless of whatever language or platform you want to deploy them on. So uh, let me know uh, what you'd like me to, to cover next. Uh, let me know what questions you have. Let me know what you've built with this because I'm always really interested in uh, machine learning so uh, solutions. Um, happy coding and have fun.